I'm so excited today. I'm Kathy Marshick, the Morrison County Veteran Service Officer, and I am here with one of my favorite veterans. He is a World War II veteran, and he has tons of things that he would love to share with us, and I love listening to his stories. He helps a lot in the community. And so, Mr. Eugene Nelson, I would like you to introduce yourself and just kind of tell us where you were born, the things, where you grew up, and the, how you got started with all of these military things. Okay, I'm Eugene A. Nelson. They call me Gene, and I was born in Eagle Bend, Minnesota, out on the farm, west of Eagle Bend. And I worked for all the farmers around there for in the Depression for 50 cents a day. So then I went to work and I hired out to a, far, a farmer there, breaking hay with the horses down close to where I lived. And God, I looked over to the west and here was a shiny something there. So I thought, well, I wonder what that is. So I stopped the horses and I went over there, and here was some change laying in the in the in the in the runway there. So I thought, well, God, I picked it up and put it in my pocket and made a couple rounds. And, and by golly, you know, I thought, well, there must be a pocketbook here. So I went back and traced it back, and here was a pocketbook. And uh, I took the the wad of money out of there, and I, my dad took it up to Parker Spray to the bank, and and um, they sent it in, and there was nineteen dollars. So I, I bought a, a new suit with that for $19 because <laughs> I, I needed nice. one. Yeah. And then I worked for different farmers around there. And then the, I had to register when I was 21 years old, of course. And uh, the, the local doctor, they would examine you to see that you were all right, that you could go in the service. So February 12th, I joined the Army in Camp Wallers, Texas. And I was there for... I think about six weeks, and we did. They didn't feed us very good down there. So then we went to um, California, and in California we were we were on the ocean. In the night we'd walk the post in the night because they were afraid the Japanese was going to come in. And uh, then we'd rest during the day. And uh, then we went down to Camp Rooker, Alabama, and we trained there. And then from there, we went to Tennessee. And we were there, we didn't do much training because it was raining and snowing and everything else. And we put up our pup tents. We lived in the pup tents there. The corporal and me would put our butt together. And we didn't dare to touch the, the roof because it would leak, see? Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so we, we drained the water from around the edge and, and we, we didn't do much maneuver in there because it rained and snowed all the time, and I think that was through Christmas. Well, from there, we went out to Camp Butner, North Carolina. That was a set training us for overseas movement. And from there, we went to North Carolina, and then from North Carolina, we went to Camp Kilmer, New York. We got on a barge. It was all dark, you know. Oh, okay. And uh, it was dark, and we got, we got on a big boat there. Mm -hmm. And my partner, Arvid Larson, he and I were together all the time. And he took my hand. He says, Nils, you're going to get home and I won't. He got killed across the road from me. And I got wounded the same day. When I got wounded, there was five of us that got wounded. And I could walk, so the lieutenant that got hurt, he says, well, we might as well go back. We can't do much more up here. But you got five of us. And so when I got back, we followed the telephone line back, because the artillery, we, you know, they, you know what that's all about. And mm -hmm. they, they uh, got back to the battalion aid station. I laid down and I fell right to sleep because we didn't get much rest, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we went back to a big tent and that had a red a cross on it. They weren't supposed to bomb us, the, the Germans, you know. So, but getting back to the, going in the first. Wave, we all lined up in England. He was going to push us back into the channel. And he found out that he didn't poke us. But that was what they called Normandy and St. Lo. We took uh, Normandy and we took St. Lo. And I got wounded in Mortain, France. That's where I got wounded. So then I, I went back to England in the hospital and uh, was there I don't know how long. So then a lieutenant, their first lieutenant, looked me up because he was in the same outfit. And he says, Gene, we're going to 
we'll go into, into England and in, in London and we'll go on a pass. I says, they'll never let me out here because both of us could walk. Oh, he says, I'll talk to the colonel. So he talked to the colonel, ah, oh, we'll give you a pass. Well, we went in and stayed at the Winston Hotel, which was the nicest one in England. <laughs> hey, nice. Yeah, then they, then they went to work and they got back and they sent me back to France. So there I was training guys going to the front line and I thought I'd never be able to talk to a group like that. It was about 150, 200. We went back in the woods and talked to us about bought everything and we were ready to go back on the front line. But they did because I was, I was wounded and I had got limited service. So I was trading guys going to the front line. Yeah, that was bad. We were 175 the first morning, three hours in action, we were 30 left. They just mauled us. Cause we were on one, one side of the hedgerow and they were on the other. Yeah. And we jumped off in the morning at five o'clock, which was dark. And um, that was a bit, yeah, that was bad. So then I, I went for 30 days on the front line or two months I was on there. It, when the war was over with in Japan, well then they, I was, I don't remember what town I was in because I couldn't remember all of them French names, you know. Right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I was, I don't know, I guess I was out on pass or something and come home and the guy come, orderly come and he says, Gene Nelson. I says, here, get ready, you're going home. <laughs> it didn't take me long to get that bag all ready to go home. I would bet. And then we went back across the ocean, took six days and it took us two weeks to go over. Oh. And our boat we was on going over was Anderson and the whole division was on there plus the crew. One day out in about in the middle of the ocean way, a, a, a Navy man had to report to a certain station. Here it was his brother that was with us, and he never knew he was on there. Oh. Yeah. Wow. It took us two weeks to go over, and six weeks to come, six uh, days to come back. It's a long across. time. Yeah. So when these two brothers ended up on the same ship, did they, they finally get to meet up? They, they got met up, because that guy from the Navy had to report to someplace, see, on okay. the ship. And uh, we got, we did get bulletins that on the, out on the ocean with the big boat, the Anderson. Yeah, and they said we were, that one time we were down around Spain because it took us two weeks to get across. And we got into Penzance, England is where they, they got off, close to Plymouth. And I was on guard duty in Penzance, England. And I, that was the southern point of, of, Pen, uh, of the England. So... I could see that firing going on because I was on uh, I was on police, on the, you know, four o'clock in the morning. I could see that, and I thought, what in the world's going on over there? Well, then at eight o'clock we found out they invaded. You know, see, and and it wasn't only about a week they put us on the ship in Plymouth, and then they peddled us across to France, and we got into France. Why I got off the ship of the ropes on the side of the ship and into that LST, and then that, they, they put that into the shore, and we got in in the water there. And you could hear the German machine guns going. And, and then we lived in tents, a little pup tents, until they, we went invaded France. But uh, they had their, he had his idea was gonna push us back into the channel, but he didn't. That was a Panzer outfit that uh, we were fighting against, yeah. Well, when you were talking, you were sharing like some of, while well, I was here, you were talking about a few things. You have this little Bible. Oh. Maybe you want to show us that and tell us how did that help you survive? How did that play a part of all of this? Okay, I carried this little Bible all the time in church on a Sunday before I left. Why they caught the minister called me up to the front and, and gave me his name in there and everything. And I carried that with me all the time in my pocket. Rain or shine, I carried that Bible with, and I come home with it. There's print in there that shows when, when he gave that to me. This is all wet, and there's a, with a fingernail file in there, I guess. See? Oh, yeah. And that was the minister that we had. Yeah, it was just, uh, and I said, I'm going to take that home with me, and I did. And I change it all the time. Did you get any letters? Like, when you were there, how did you have any communication at all with home? Or? We didn't have anything. Right. But my buddy that got killed, he would get a letter, but he was in a different he was in a different platoon after the first morning because we lost so many men and then they changed, put some old ones up with another platoon and then we stayed in the regular platoon. 
I was in there, it was, I think we were the three hours. And then uh, the squad leader got killed, second in command got wounded. So the captain says, you got to take over the squad. So I went from PFC to staff sergeant. <laughs> That's a pretty fast way of moving up. And I, I didn't know that I was advanced up to a staff sergeant. So that, it's in the picture there, right there. How about this nice shadow box? Tell oh, us yeah. a little, little bit well, about this. And when I got home, I, got, I belonged to the Legion. And the Legion had an article in there about the 35th Division and the 134th Infantry. So I sent it for that. That's the way I got it. I didn't know I had all them coming. I got two bunch star here, burn star, two purple hearts, combat infantry badge, and I got that dollar. I says I was going to bring it home and 35th division. Oh, and good kid conduct medal. You wouldn't believe that. <laughs> I'd believe it. I'd believe it. <laughs> yeah. And probably one of the most, so the Bronze Star, I would assume, is probably for saving people's lives. Right. That's yeah. what you get when you've been up on the front lines. Yes. And you survive. And uh, the then my dog tags down there. They, yeah. When I got wounded, why, they um, give you a morphine shot. And that morphine shot is, you know, they give them in the hospitals and stuff like that. And then they put a, a slip on your dog tag that you had it because you don't dare to get another one right when you get back to the battalion aid station because it probably put you completely out. Right. Yeah. Yes, that's so, too much that's not good. And this purple heart, that is a pretty big deal because that's when you were wounded. That's when I was wounded. And that's that one right there. Right. Yeah. yeah that's the one, yeah. yeah. And you got your name back of it. And you have on that bronze star to it there. Okay. That's got the name to it. Yeah. Yeah. And what about that, that dollar there? What's the meaning of oh, this dollar? That, you got to tell us the story about that. That dollar, before I got on the ship in, in New York, I took the, you had to change your money, see? So I said, well, I'm going to take that, and I'm coming back with that dollar, which I did. A right? lot of hard times. A lot of hard times. And then you had to keep going. I had to keep going. The two months was enough up there. Oh, I can't even imagine. Nope. Didn't see any beds until out, all that time. Oh, so where did you sleep? Slept right on the ground. Yeah. Right Not on the ground. Not many showers either. They had to oh, no. the river. Yeah, I would, when we got surrounded one night, when that day my buddy got killed, why, uh, the Germans, we could hear them talking. And uh, I said, you guys, I said, get on your, get on your guns. I said, we got to move up through to, to the front where A and B company was. And so we had to cross a river. And my bazooka, man, he lost his <laughs> bazooka in the river. <laughs> And we was lucky enough, I run into the ones up in the front. That was A and B company. I was in C. So. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we laid along the bank in the night, and the next day, then they run another outfit through to us to relieve us. Otherwise, I was afraid we was going to be a prisoner because mm. they had us surrounded. Oh. Yeah. That would be miserable. Yeah, that's for sure. What else you want to know? Well, now we've got this picture. Yeah. That you said this is when you came home. That's when I come home. And there was a tech sergeant, and I says, "Where? Well, I when we were coming home, I he, I says, well, where are you going?' He says, "Minneapolis." Oh, I says, "My my mother's going to meet me down there at this Dr. Reeves's place." And uh, well, he says, "I'll take you right there. My wife is meeting us at Camp McCoy." So I rode with him, Camp McCoy to Minneapolis, and I was uh, got on that step there. My mother took me a picture there. Oh, I bet that was the happiest day of her life. Happiest day in her life. I mean, the yep. first one might have been when you were born, and then to right. have her baby back. I tried to get out because I had a brother killed, and I was the only one left in the family. But they wouldn't let me out. So I said, well, I'll go through with it, to which I went. Yeah. And then tell us about coming back home. What was it like in those days? I couldn't, get, I couldn't get used to being back home again. It was tough. But I had a... a the, the gal I married, she was with her uncle and aunt out at the farm. And here was my picture up on the radio. And she says, who is that? And well, they said, that's my son. He's over in Europe. Well, give me his address. I'll write to him. <laughs> so she wrote to me and she says, I'm going to be there to meet you in Eagle Bend on the Saturday night. <laughs> she come from the range towns. Oh. And so uh, that night I met her there and I married her. 
Aww. I married her the next year. I, that was in October. I got out, and uh, so I corresponded back and forth. And, Very good. Yeah, got married in 46. I come out in 45. Okay. Yeah, and I was married till she passed away in yeah. 1990. Okay. Yeah. How many kids did you guys have? One girl. One girl. All one right. girl. Then I got one boy. And they got great. So now got one great granddaughter. That's the family. Oh. Yeah. And how? What did you do after? What for a job afterwards? Well, I I applied for a job in Eagle Bend, and I'll be darned if I didn't get it. But it was working in the liquor store, and I didn't like it. So one day, where the guy in the console. He uh, stopped in, he says, Gene, I'd like to talk to you. And I thought, what does he want? Does he want to manage this place? I'm not going to. So I stopped in. He says, I'd like to hire you as a salesman. I says, I don't know anything about sales. Oh, you know all these farmers around. He says, I took the job. I was there five years. Well, then I, I quit and I bought a new car and we took a trip out to California. It was gone for three weeks. Left my daughter with my mother up in the range towns. And uh, come home and he called, he called me back again. He says, well, I need help in the shop. Can you come down? Yeah, I'll come down, I said. But then in Little Falls, I got a job with Milt Johnson Pontiac. Well, then he folded up. So uh, the guy was on National Bushing. He called me up, and he wanted me to come over and work for him. No, I says, I just started working for Les. Les called me up, Les Warner. He called up and says, I'd like to talk to you, Gene. Come on down. I says, okay, I'll be down there. Ah, he says, I'd like to... Have you worked for me now? I'll need a man. He says, if everything goes right, you'll get the salesman's job. Well, I think I was in there about three weeks, and, and I got the job as salesman. And I was there 33 years. So that's, <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I could see you doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. I still like it. Yeah. I still like it. And you're a big part of a lot of veterans organizations. I know you're part of the Morrison County DAV and, and things. What made you want to join those? Well, it was somebody else that got into me to do a join up. Uh -huh. The first, the DAV, I think that was Vernon Bagalki. Okay. He says, you were wounded, and, you, and I says, yeah. Well, he says, how about joining the DAV? And then the state cemetery. I was in there. Uh -huh. And that first building they built? Yes. I, I worked on that building. I'm, I'm the only one living now that worked on that building. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got more medals. I belonged to the shrine. Yeah. And uh, I belonged there 50 years. I belonged to the Masonic Lodge for 60 years. Uh, I belonged over 50 years to any of them. That's how it's <laughs> outstanding. Mm -hmm. What else? You got? <laughs> and then we've got this lovely picture here. Oh, yeah. If you want to talk about that and tell us a this little bit about This is Company it. C. The one, bottom one is Company C. And I think that was taken down in Alabama. And the top one is the regiment, the old regiment. And these are about 175, and up there is about... Thousand, five thousand probably, in that picture. And that's a nice picture. It is. My mother had that rolled up in the because I'd sent it home, and here when she passed away, here that was. And my son-in-law put the frame on there. That is very beautiful and a wonderful memory. Oh yeah. And you've got your yearbook there. Yeah. Or like a yearbook, kind of like high school, where they have all of your people. Right. It's fun right. To reflect back on. Those I'm things. in this book. Inside there about. Um, uh, but a guy that was in my squad that got wounded with me when I got wounded. Nice kid. I'd only had him up there about two weeks or something like that. And so that officer had asked him who was his squad leader. Well, he says, Sergeant Nelson, he said. He says, you, he's like a dad to you. You take close to being with him all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? How about the VA? So when you guys came back, did the VA even exist, or did you guys even know that you could get help anywhere? No, not really. No, no. Not when right. I lived in Eagle Bend, there was a Veterans Administration guy uh, over there, and he got me my first compensation because I, I had PTS, post-traumatic distress, the first morning. Oh. Yeah, uh, and I carried that all the time. Oh, yeah. 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 And what you're doing here and sharing your story is good. You're getting it out and talking about it. I think a lot of times people hold it in and stuff, but it's interesting to all of us to hear about it. Well, I love hearing these stories. Well, and yeah. What that, do you think helped you the most? Because you obviously, you, 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 I mean, I'm, I know these things bother you, but you seem to be doing well. What would, could you recommend to other people to do that helps you survive after war? Well, they should, they should contact like a lady like you. 
and, and go through. But the, the, a lot of them won't do that. Right. And they say that, uh, you know, that uh, you're not supposed to say too much about it. But I think that people should start to know this here, what we went through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, the, the, my squad leader there getting killed right back of me, you know. But there's other ones, and uh, that, there ain't many left of us in World War II veterans, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess I'm well, probably the oldest one that I went with that outfit there. It, but you're it, young and spry. Young and spry, yeah. yeah that's, that's what we used to go places, and I talked a lot, you know, and my wife say, well, she says he never keeps his mouth shut. Well, I says, if it wasn't for my mouth, you wouldn't be where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what makes a good salesman. <laughs> well, I that's guess right. I, I got along good with him. I liked them, and they liked me, I guess. And yeah. So, well, keep, do you think that you kept keeping busy? Because people, things were different back in those days. When well, people that, came back, there wasn't the help, like you said. And so do you think that sometimes the keeping the busy and doing things, working hard, helped you? Yeah, I got something going all the time here, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, I, I had to talk to some, some school kids at a district. Uh, I don't I always enjoy it. They call joy. And so I had to talk to the kids there when I got home. And so there was a parent of one of the kids. Ah, he said, that Gene Nelson, he talks too much. He didn't see much. And I said, I would have liked to have him seen because he couldn't walk between the house and the barn in the dark because he had to take his wife along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you think helping other people helped you? Oh, I'm sure they did. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. They all recognized me quite a bit, you know, like yesterday. They come and got me in. Yeah. Shag, you know, shag. Oh, yeah. 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 And you've done so much for other people, and I, I bet that helped you to go work through your own problems. Yes, that's and right. And kept you living to be young and spry like you are. Yeah, that's right. I guess so. And I mean, I, really, you're kind of someone we should all be looking up to. That's exactly right. Really. And they should talk more, the ones that, of course, there ain't many left of the old veterans. I don't think there's anybody left in the organizations I belong to, mm -hmm. like the VFW and the DAV and, you know. Getting out there and working hard and picking yourself back up. That's you right. can't sit and talk you, about stuff. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to go to work right away when I got home. And so the dad gave me the, the milk jack. He gave me after three cows. And that was what I got for wages till I went to Eagle Bend and started working here. <laughs> <laughs> Things are way different now. Just well, think I of guess that. So. Oh. That's a, yeah, that's right. Well, it has just been a pleasure. Any other things that you want to share with us, Eugene? No. So much history just being in your apartment here at the Little Falls Care Center. It's just amazing. Yeah. Well, I go over there and I talk to Lyle Nelson. You know, he loves to come. And yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else that you got, Mr. <laughs> Crowd Veteran here? Love well, it. Well, I, I don't know there's anything that we haven't gone to. I keep thinking about it. I can't, you know, you keep, you'll never forget it. Right. You'll never forget it. Yeah. And, uh, that is I went down to company reunions once in a while, but then they folded up kind of down there in Beatrice, Nebraska. That was a National Guard outfit thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Maybe this will get on TV down there. <laughs> May, it just might be. It just might be. Well, it's an honor to be sitting here with well, you. As a veteran, I just, yeah, it's just very, I feel very blessed that I well, can be here good. and talking with you and hearing your stories. It's yeah, just amazing. Yeah, you can believe it all because I went through it. Well, you're you. I, this is wonderful. This makes history fun. That's yeah. That's I would, right. I didn't fall asleep one bit. No. I was very excited. Well, about you'd never this, fall so. asleep with me. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, thank you so much, Eugene. This is just well, this is I, remarkable. I enjoyed. I enjoyed doing. I'm excited it. about this. Yeah. Okay. And thank him for his service. This is a wonderful man, and it's wonderful to have the opportunity. He will be 100 years old in November, isn't it? November 9th. November 9th, right? Close to Veterans Day. It's if I very, live that very long. neat. You might be like 120. I don't know. My mother, I hope so. I hope we My mother was 102. There we go. So you got to pass her up. So you got a few more years to well, go for darn know. sure. This is wonderful.